Hey everyone, Ryan Mentz here, and in this video I have 21 change requests that uh, I want Sony to consider for their full frame alpha camera lineup. And these came from uh, just many months out in the field. Uh, whenever I'd be irritated or just a little bit irked by some kind of feature or non existing feature or function on the camera, I'd jot a note down in my phone or take a voice memo or something. And eventually I compiled this list and it's uh, ballooned quite a bit, so I might as well uh, get some of this out there before I explode and I run out of memory on my phone. So 21 changes here, so let's get started. Okay, number one is the delays. Come on, what is happening? I don't know how they haven't fixed this already, but everything you do on a Sony camera, there's a delay to it. Like just a very, it's a short delay, but it's noticeable because it happens for everything you do on the camera. You change the shutter speed, you change the ISO, there's a small but noticeable delay to it, and it's just insane that it's still happening. I don't know what's what's up with that, but like you use like a DSLR, it feels like changing the shutter speed is directly connected. You you do it, and it's the display is just an immediate update. There's no lag at all. I want Sony cameras to give me that confidence too. So if I'm trying to change a go or like go up or down a full stop of the ISO and do those three clicks. I want to do those three clicks and just boom, I'm there. Whereas now I always have to do three clicks and have to watch for the delay and make sure it did the three clicks and then I can proceed to whatever I was shooting. It's just so freaking annoying. I don't know why we're on like Mark four of some of these cameras and just hasn't been fixed. So if there's one thing that Sony takes away from the list, this list is just please fix the delays. Number two. <laughs> Number two, I want to be able to change uh, the crop mode going in and out of crop mode while the camera buffer is clearing from the photos I just took. So I'm using crop mode all the time, uh, even with like the A9 where it's full frame 24 megapixels, but then you go into crop mode and it drops down to like 11 megapixels. I'm still using that. I'm going to crop and post all the time anyway, so I might as well see like the inside the viewfinder, a close up picture so I can nail focus even better uh, in the field. So crop mode makes sense across all their cameras. Crop mode is awesome, but what I hate is I can't get out of crop mode or go into crop mode while the buffer is clearing. So if I'm shooting a bird or an animal or something that uh, I'm in crop mode because I wanted that close look, but uh, something changes, they, they fly to a closer perch or something, so I want to get out of crop mode. It's still clear in the buffer from those photos I just took, so I can't change out of the crop mode in that instance. And it's just super bothering. I don't see how those two are connected, so uh, fix it, please. Number three is a new ability that I want, and I want to be able to limit the amount of focus points that uh, are selectable from the uh, multi-selector. So I want to be able to have like a nine point grid uh, all on the rule of thirds and then the center point and be able to just click once over uh, using the multi-selector and I'm already on that rule of thirds. Whereas right now there's just so many points to choose from. It's, it's great that you can really nail the exact focus point you want, but sometimes uh, speed is much more important. And so right now I just kind of, uh, for like songbirds that are just moving in and out of purchase super quick, I just kind of leave it a little above the center point right now and then I'll crop and post. But I imagine if you could just do like a once one click over and you're on that rule of thirds line when you're shooting, you just hit that once, you're there. And then if they turn and face the other way, so you want to be on the other rule of thirds, just two clicks to the other rule of thirds line. You know what I mean? So um, it would just make shooting a lot better, <laughs> a lot, lot better if you don't have to deal with a million focus points to move through and uh, mess up with because the multi-selector sometimes have a mind of its own. Um, so just give me like a nine point uh, focus limited selection thing or, you know what I'm saying. All right, number four. Allow focus point movement. Okay, so yeah, so this is something that one of the Sony cameras actually has, the A92. But I want it to be brought to all the other cameras in a firmware update or something, especially the A9. Um, 
a lot of focus point movement in AFC, like the A92. So what the A92 can do is uh, when you're holding down, this is for like shutter focus, by the way. So if you're holding down the shutter button halfway, so AFC is activated, you can still use the multi-selector and choose a focus point while focus is active. So right now what it's like is if you have pressed the shutter and the focus is active, you can't change your focus point. And it's, uh, it seems like who cares, but again, it's one of those things where speed matters. And so if I'm quick to uh, acquire focus on like a bird on a perch and I get it uh, in the right focus plane, but now I want to adjust my composition a little, but I don't want to like miss anything. So I want to like be firing, I want to be focusing, but I also want to move that focus point and I don't want to waste time doing it. So um, it allows you to make that adjustment while still, you know, being right on top of that bird. So that's something I want brought to the A9 first version and the other cameras that would probably be capable of it too. Next up is number five. For number five, I'm not sure if this is because of a technical limitation um, with how autofocus uh, works to uh, have great accuracy and um, be able to track well and stuff and all that. So, uh, But if it's not a technical limitation, it's just because they didn't think to put it in or didn't think anyone wants it. Uh, I'm just throwing this in there. I want a flexible spot, extra small uh, focus area point. So right now there's uh, obviously a flexible spot small, but that still is not small enough because if you're shooting songbirds, which are usually going to be pretty small in the frame already, and you're trying to shoot uh, through something like foliage in the foreground or something, uh, the camera is pretty quick to pick up whatever is closest to the camera. And I really, really want it to get, you know, it seems obvious to me, like get the bird, obviously not the other stuff around it. So if the focus point is even smaller, that would be great. Right now I use manual focus so freaking much because uh, small just doesn't cut it. And it happens a lot more often than you might think. So every time that happens, I'm like, I wish this focus point was smaller. I'm not sure if it's a technical thing, like I said, but um, if it's not, that'd be great. Put that in. All right, so this next one started off with uh, one thing that irked me, but it kind of snowballed into why is in it for everything. So uh, what I originally had was uh, I want shutter controls AF option to be in the function menu, where right now the function menu doesn't have all the menu options, so it's limited in that regard. Um, but shutter controls AF is pretty important to be added to the function menu because I want to access that very quickly. And the reason I wanted that uh, originally was because I used to do back button focus until I realized uh, the superior method is shutter focus. Don't at me. Um, but uh, when I was doing back button focus and I wanted to switch to shutter focus, uh, it's super helpful to do that when you're doing uh, ground level shooting. So if you didn't have, uh, if you're still using the back button focus and you're at ground level, it's really awkward to uh, be able to hit that shutter and the back button. Whereas uh, if you just have the focus point with the, or the focus activation with the shutter button, you can hold it a little bit different, use your thumb on the shutter and it's a lot more comfortable to use and manipulate and all that stuff. So I would like to go back and forth with those quickly, which is why I want it added to the function menu. But then I realized why isn't like, any or every menu item added to the function menu so you can add whatever you want because I don't think the Sony engineers can possibly foretell what everyone wants uh, to do with their Sony cameras so it doesn't make sense for them to get to pick and choose what goes to the function menu I think they should just open it up to all of them and what I think it really comes down to is they don't want to make icons for the function menu for every single menu item there is so if you notice in the function menu everything has a little icon and uh, that's a lot of icons to make for the menu, but I think they need to figure out a different way to do it then because every menu item should be able to be activated and deactivated, blah, blah, for going into the function menu. So most of these items, I tried to make it broad and apply to all the Sony full frame cameras, but this next one, we're on number seven. Um, I think this would make most sense for the A7R series 
uh, just because of the megapixels it has. But I want to see like a 2x crop mode, not just the uh, 1.5 that you have right now, but like um, kind of in the similar vein as clear mid zoom, but for raw stills shooting. So um, really just uh, getting that crop in there in camera uh, for sm some small birds would uh, really help because we're cropping off all that extra information anyways in post. Um, it would just really help to uh, really nail that focus, really see that bird up close. Uh, so I'd like to see like a 2x uh, or, you know, something between the 1.5 and the 2x or whatever you're thinking. Just give us more crop in camera for those cameras. I think it would make a lot of sense. Next up is number eight. Uh, <laughs> I think I got to pause this one so I can collect my thoughts because this is another thing that's bothered me for a while. So hold on. Okay, Sony, I don't know, there's another thing that I don't know why you haven't fixed already, but uh, large embedded JPEGs in your RAW files, please. You're forcing me to shoot JPEG plus RAW on all my Sony cameras for no freaking reason other than to get a preview size of the JPEG at full size. I don't want the JPEG files. I They're so useless. What? No. Um, so I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG only for the sole reason of when I load my photos into Photo Mechanic, I get a full size preview and I can, uh, you know, go through and, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> call. So I can call my photos, uh, be, being, being able to see what the photo actually looks like large. Right now it's just a tiny little thumbnail that you put in with the RAW files and that's so stupid. So uh, get with it, get with like every other manufacturer there is, and put a large, full-size JPEG within your RAW files. Thank you. All right, next one is something that I personally don't care about, but I'm just going to echo on to uh, what other people have said. And uh, it does make sense for uh, some things I do, I guess, but I probably wouldn't even bother changing this in the menu if it did exist. But I'm sure other people are thinking it. So SRAW, uh, small RAW files, especially for like the R4, I heard that Sony is working on adding SRAW to it. So what that is, is just a smaller RAW file. So you don't need the full 61, 62, 61 megapixels of the A7R. Uh, so just uh, it knocks down the megapixels in the RAW file. So your SRAW would be like, you know, half that or whatever. So you don't have these uh, huge files in your system when you never needed the 61 megapixels anyways. Uh, that's what SRAW it would be. And uh, I'm just gonna add on to uh, whatever the other people are saying about it. Next up is, uh, oh man, there's another one. This, <laughs> this, uh, this list is just uh, bringing up some nasty thoughts. No, uh, faster wake time. So, Oh my gosh, I and you, I'm sure, have missed shots because of this. Um, when the camera goes to sleep, uh, you're not turning it off, but when it goes to sleep, um, it takes way too long to fire that thing back up. Uh, they got to figure that one out. They got to make it faster. So when it wakes from sleep, um, it should not take, you know, five seconds or whatever. I'm just making that number up, but that's what it feels like. And so now, and I feel like a lot of people do this, they set the sleep time to 30 minutes. So essentially the camera never goes to sleep. Um, that's what I do. It costs battery, but it's worth it because I'd rather spend the battery, get the shot, than uh, save battery and miss the shot. Makes sense to me. So faster wake time, pretty please. Next up. Okay, so the faster wake time, that bothers me, sure, and I've missed some shots from it. This next one, though, this past week, I've missed so many shots because of this, and so they need to, uh, this one is actually probably an easy fix. It's not like that to re-engineer things. They just have to remove something that's already there, and it's not going to, I don't think it would affect anything, so... Super easy. Remove the info screen when you're switching to the C1, C2, C3 modes on the uh, top dial of the camera. That is just so ridiculous. So uh, I'm shooting on manual pretty much all the time. And uh, when I want to get video, I have C1 set to my what my video settings would be. And so I click up once and I have to sit through the info screen 
um, which takes forever to you know initialize or whatever it's doing, and it sits there until you uh, press the shutter or press some button and it'll go away. So that info screen is completely useless. Like if you use your camera more than once a week, you know what your C1, C2, C3 settings are. You don't need to see um, an info screen pop up there and stay there until you do something about it. And then by the time you clear it out, your whatever you're shooting is gone. Um, that's happened to me oh, like five times this week. It's so stupid. And what's even worse is I know you don't need it because when you go from the C1 setting or whatever and you drop down to manual, uh, it's an instant change. There's no initialization period, which... Uh, I thought maybe like when you go to C1, it has to like reinitialize all the settings, blah, blah, it takes a while. So they're masking it behind an info screen. But that's not true because when you go from the C1 to manual, it's just an instant change of all the settings and you're ready to shoot. So you, I know they don't need to put in that info screen. So get rid of it because people are missing shots. And by people, I mean me, please. Okay, next one. So this next one, and actually these next three, three have to do with uh, the recall custom hold function, which is probably the second or first most powerful thing about the Sony cameras. And so I have a video about uh, using recall custom hold. I'll put that somewhere um, and you'll figure that out. But uh, <laughs> uh, check it out because if you're not using recall custom hold, you're missing shots because it's super awesome. It changes your settings with uh, holding a button. So do it, uh, check it out. But uh, the next three are all about that and different things I want to happen or added or blah, blah. So uh, number 12, uh, recall custom hold. I want an option to disable image stabilization. So one of my buttons on the back, uh, it changes my camera settings to be ready for birds in flight. So that way when I'm shooting like a perched bird and I notice a bird flying somewhere else or that bird takes off or something, I can instantly go to my uh, bird in flight settings. And what I would like to happen is to turn off image stabilization because more than likely I'm using it when I'm shooting the perched bird. But if I'm shooting a flying bird at one two thousandth plus second, I don't need image stabilization and it's just going to probably make my photo a little blurry if I'm panning with it or anything. So I want to be able to turn off image stabilization with a recall custom hold setting. Next is... Uh, also a recall custom hold and it's going to be AFC tracking sensitivity. So I want to be able to change the tracking sensitivity. Uh, there you have one, two, three, four, five settings that you can use. And I want to be able to change that as well um, as an option in the recall custom hold. And uh, lastly, but maybe most importantly, I want recall custom hold to activate faster. So I guess this ties into number one, just faster. Uh, there's delays all around Sony cameras. And uh, so when I hold the, uh, when I change or press a recall custom hold button on the back, I want it to instantly change to whatever I have it set up as. Right now it's a little bit of a delay and I don't like it. So <laughs> that's uh, 12, 13, and 14 on my list. Next up is 15. For number 15, I want a focus recall on the camera end. And by that, I mean uh, be able to mark a focus distance um, and then recall that focus distance with a press of a button. So uh, like the 400 millimeter 2.8 and the 600 millimeter F4, they have it with the uh, little turn ring they have on the those cameras. But I know from using like the Panasonic GH5 that it can be done on the camera end too. So like with the Panasonic, you can uh, mark one point or one distance and then mark another distance. And it'll actually, you have like this ability to uh, do like different speed uh, focus ramping uh, or focus racking. And it's super cool. I love that feature. Um, but you don't even have to take it that far. Just uh, give me like a button to, uh, to set and to recall that focus distance. And that's really helpful for like if you... Have, if you're sitting in one place and you have like a, a certain, I'm talking bird photography again, of course, but you have like a perch that like the ideal perch you want your bird to land on. And so you set your focus distance to that. So 
Uh, you can recall it at any time if that happens with your bird lands in that perfect spot. You can get there. You can nail that shot super quick. There's no hunting. Uh, but life doesn't always happen that way. So your bird's probably going to land somewhere else. And you want to start shooting that and, you know, shoot until, you know, hopefully it gets there. Um, but uh, being able to recall a focus point is just super helpful for, I'm sure, a lot of different reasons. And it can be possible on the camera too, from what I know from using Panasonic's. All right, next up we have uh, something that also deals with uh, focus distances, and it's going to be a custom focus range. So on uh, like this camera, the 200, or the camera, this lens, the 200, 600, uh, you have three options for the focus range um, that you can set it to. So you can do the full range, it'll go from the close focus distance to infinity, uh, you got, what, 10, 10 meters to 2.4 meters, so it's only going to focus between that and then uh, infinity to up to the 10 meter range. So <laughs> what I find, at least in my own photography, is birds really love to perch away from me at 10 meters. So um, I generally just keep the camera on full because since they're only, always in that range, I can't afford to keep on switching between those two. Um, I'll switch to it if I have like a bird in flight and I know it's never going to come close, but otherwise like it'd be cool if I could change, um, the close focus distance to 12 meters say. And so just giving me a custom option of my focus range, uh, would be super helpful. Our next one is a big one. This is, <laughs> this is real big, big guys, big guys. So this is like the most revolutionary thing. Um, since I've been covering the camera industry, uh, I'm talking about the zebras. The zebras are the holy, wow, amazing. Uh, zebras for photo taking is just like such a huge step. And I guess for this one, I'm not really, I don't have a specific thing to, to want here. Uh, but I just want Sony to really realize this. I'm not sure if they totally realize how game changing zebras for photo taking is. And so what I'm thinking, what they should do, um, or how they should uh, adapt zebras is to have like a highlight and shadow clipping warning, uh, like a live feed, you know, real time showing on the display uh, what's actually going to be clipped in your raw files because they have the data, they're, they're doing it all real time for other things. So, um, so they know when the something is a hot spot or something zero, zero, zero on the display for raw files. So. Um, just really think about how amazing, uh, that technology is because you will never, ever clip anything ever again if they really put their best minds to it. And I have a video of how to set up these Sony cameras for using the zebras, but they have it on such a backend way of doing this that they should really, um, think about how to put that as a forefront feature. They could really market the heck out of it. They should, because I'm amazed by using the zebras on these cameras. So um, check out that video. I'll link it somewhere. Uh, next up, we'll do number 18, which is a larger, grippier control wheel. And I try not to do too many physical changes, but uh, these next ones are all going to be physical changes to the cameras. Um, this obviously requires, you know, the smart minds to think about how to redo all the mechanics on the inside and stuff. So I'm sure these aren't going to be easy, but I would love a larger grippier control wheel on the back. If you use gloves with the Sony cameras, some gloves, you literally can't get the traction to move that control wheel. Um, so I would like it to be big as the Canon ones and grippy as the Canon ones. So, uh, yeah, do that. Um, next up is adding a button between the AFON and the AEL uh, on the back. And I know there's room for it because if I stick my thumb between those two buttons, I feel like barely neither of those buttons. So ergonomically, I feel like there's enough room for a third button up there. And uh, what that's going to help with uh, is a very big change. Do it. I removed it. I thought it was too big of a change, so I didn't put it in here. Oh yeah, actually I remember what I was going to say about the uh, drastic change. Um, so when I was talking about the control wheel making that bigger, I was thinking of removing the two buttons that are below the control wheel to make room for that bigger thing. 
And then you'll recoup one of those on the top spot. And you could probably recoup one somewhere else in the camera too. So, or just don't because I ran out of reasons to use custom buttons because uh, you have so many of them. So uh, my huge drastic change that I don't think would ever happen is remove the two buttons on the bottom, uh, make that control wheel bigger, add a third button to the top uh, between the A, E, L, and A, F on, and throw another button to recoup that other one on the other side, probably. I don't know. But do that. Easy. <laughs> Number 20, I have talked about every chance I get, probably. Um, remove this locking button, or locking noise from the, uh, the mode dial. Because, like a couple other things I mentioned in this video, that causes missed shots. Because you have to take your whole hand off that grip, use your little, you know, chopstick fingers to uh, manipulate that mode dial. And by the time you do, you can put your hand back on the grip, you're missing stuff. So um, I would like it to be like the uh, A7R4 and the A92, where it's a unlock lock choice instead of right now, where it's a force lock. Um, I hate that thing. I've hated it since they put in the A7R2, I think is the first one. Before that, there was no lock. Um, so do that again, or just put that lock unlock thing on there. I don't like missing shots. All right, last up is, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not too annoyed to buy it anymore because I really put on a lens that's not the 200-600 and I like a shorter lens, it makes more sense to add a strap, but I'm talking about the strap lugs, redesign them, they're stupid. You have that hangy thing that makes so much noise. Um, dumb just make a cutout in your camera put a little bar on it and people can thread to thread through it to add their strap there's no reason for this stupid thing to hang out and adding a lug to it and then putting your strap on the lug and no just be smart guys that's stupid be smart that's it um <laughs> i did write a bonus on here uh my bonus is a remain unchanged request uh, never, ever, 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 ever put a flip out screen on these photocentric, um, hopefully you keep them photocentric cameras because flip out screens, yeah, that's probably pretty cool for video stuff, but, uh, for photo taking, having a flip out screen is the worst. And I think Canon took a very big misstep in, uh, throwing that on their cameras. So, um, flip up, flip up screens, keep it that. I like them. I like them. You just flip them up. You don't have to go swivel and you have this thing hanging out. No. Flip up screens. Not flip out, flip up. And that's it. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, <laughs> that was a stupid way to end this video, but I'm dealing with it and you're going to deal with it too. So, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great week slash weekend and uh, I'll see you next time.